Hey, what's up, everyone? How you doing? It's me, Mr. Four Cavs Killer. Uh, for those of you who haven't updated 1231.1 update, I highly suggest that you do. Remember, you cannot update it through internet. You have to have a USB stick. Uh, it has to be done through a website. You have to download it on the USB uh, dongle, and then you have to allow a Samsung KSA 1000 to detect through USB stick to update that 1.2 gigabyte file. Okay, I have a video on that. I already done the video. Now let's talk about KSA 1000. Uh, one thing you guys have to remember: this television, it's edgelit. It's always going to be edgelit. There's nothing we can do about that. All right. So I want everyone to understand. The difference between edge lit and full rail local dimming. Full rail local dimming uh, doesn't have any bleed of light coming from the bottom. Okay, like from the bottom. Edge lit has that, and the whole purpose of this edge lit was to make this TV look thinner. Okay, that's why Q8FN, Q9FN bezels are thick. That's why the TV is thick, it, it, it's much thicker. Because it has full rail local dimming in the back. This TV, it's edge lit. And the whole purpose of edge lit back in, uh, what was it, 2016, was to make video, uh, to make television thinner so it can fit on the wall. So it can, like, I mean, this TV will, will look nice on the wall because it has very thin bezels. And that was the idea. But the problem is, the edge lit doesn't give you a good viewing angle. The edge lit has the bleed of the light. Now, with this new update, 1231.1, I did notice that they were able to a little bit, just a little bit, tone down that edge lit. Now, remember, there's not a whole lot they can do. Maybe just tone it down a little bit. And how, how could they achieve that, you ask? Well, how could they do that? Well, there's a couple of tricks they can do that with. They can, you know, uh, use the... Uh, couple of uh, tricks with the uh, ambient light where they can tone down that light a little bit so it doesn't blast. Uh, I'm going to show it to you right now. This is something that I would recommend you guys do. Uh, go to uh, experts. Uh, go to special viewing mode. Actually, no. Go to um, echo solution. Go to the echo solution. Uh, keep the echo sensor on. And when you select the, uh, you can do this, for example. This is another good way of doing it. Uh, you can use the energy saving mode and you can keep it on low. Uh, if you keep it on low, uh, here's the thing. You will, uh, you will lose that peak brightness. But you're not going to see as much of that bleed light as you will when you do this. Uh, this is the one way of you reducing that, but honestly, uh, here's what I want to say. I would just keep it off. Edge lit, it's edge lit. Q6F, Q7F, KSA 1000, these are all edge lits. They're edge lit TVs. So it's important for you to understand that you're not going to get <coughs> the best possible viewing angle. You're not going to get it with the edge lit. But majority of you are going to be watching this TV from the center. Okay, I don't think anybody's going to be sitting way out far in the left, way out far in the right. Majority of you are going to be watching this from the center. And if you're watching this TV from the center, you're going to be okay. All right. Now, that's edge lit. So I want everybody to understand there's not a whole lot you can do about the edge lit. The only thing you can do, like I said, is use the, uh, the eco solution and... To, uh, tone down the uh, that backlit, <clears throat> that edge lit light. Tone it down a little bit, but you're gonna lose the peak brightness. Like that's the only way you can reduce that, just a tiny little bit. Okay, but the edge lit will only affect you if you are watching it at night, and it's only going to affect you if you're moving to the left or to the right. That's the uh, one issue with the edge lit. But if you're watching the edge lit from the center, it's not going to be a problem. But let's talk about the positives about this TV. 
Uh, like I said, this new update, 12, 1231.1, I did notice that the uh, the black digital levels are, are a bit better. The contrast, dynamic contrast, has been improved. And when you select dynamic contrast, it's been way much improved from the uh, previous update. And there's my dynamic contrast. You see, if I move it to medium, if I move it to low, if I move it to off, uh, everything becomes bleak. When I move it to high, it becomes much, much better. Here, maybe I can do a demonstration. Here, right now it's on high, and right now it's on off. High, off, and high again. So dynamic contrast has been really improved here. Uh, but let's talk about the benefits. Okay, everyone should know by now, edge lit, it's edge lit. It's not something you're going to enjoy because it's not going to give you the, those deep dark levels that you want. It's not going to give you the, the viewing angles that you want. Edge lit, it's something that I'm not a huge fan of and it's something that a lot of companies are getting rid of, including Samsung. You're not going to see Samsung produce any more edgeless TVs. It's not going to happen. Trust me. But let's talk about the positives. Okay, so I want you to understand, yes, KS8000, Q6, Q7, they're edgelit. And you're going to have to deal with that fact. It is what it is. All right? There's nothing you can do about that. The only thing you can do is get a full array of local dimming, Q8FN or Q9FN. Uh, but let's talk about the positives that this TV has. You know... I had this TV since 2016, and I am not complaining. Uh, it's still a great TV, still looks good. Uh, one thing I appreciate is obviously uh, the color gamut. This TV was way ahead of its time with its color accuracy and the color gamut, because this was the, the TV that truly utilized the quantum dots back then in 2016. So this was a big deal when this TV came out. And the reason why this TV was so expensive, they, they called it Super UHD TV because of the uh, quantum dots that it has. And these quantum dots truly represents the HDR back then. Like this was like the best HDR TV back then in 2016. In 2016, if you're looking for an HDR TV, this was it. The reason why this TV was highly claimed, it's because of the quantum dot technology that helps with the wide color gamut. And on top of that, you had over 1,000, 1,000 nits of peak of brightness. It was, I think it goes up to 1,200. Some measured it that this TV can go up to 1,200 nits. So to have 1,000 nits uh, peak brightness with full white collar gamut, this was a perfect 4K HDR TV at the time. Like, if you wanted to enjoy your 4K HDR, this was it. And even to this day, uh, in this year, 2018, uh, this TV still holds uh, its own, you know. Like I said, it is edgelit. The only caviar, the only problem, the only issue is that edgelit. If this TV wasn't edgelit, this would be, like, honestly, I would never bother getting another one. This would be it, you know. You know, and another thing that this TV has, it's uh, due to the color gamut and the quantum dots, it has uh, the best possible white bright levels due to the quantum dot. Because quantum dot and the uh, these uh, nanocrystals, these quantum dots, these photons, they reproduce the best possible white levels. So when you're looking at the scene like this, when you're looking at the blue sky, it's going to reflect really nice especially when you have <clears throat> dynamic contrast set to high. You know, again, if you can find this TV, if you can get the Samsung KS8000 for like a really cheap, uh, I'm telling you, uh, Samsung KS8000, it's still a good deal. If you can find it really cheap somewhere, uh, if you can get a 65-inch or even 55-inch, I say go go with it. Uh, you will not be disappointed. If, you, if you're stepping from... 1080p television into a 4K television, KS8000 is still a good TV. Is there a difference between KS8000 and Q8FN and Q9FN? Yes, guys. Let me say this for the one last time. 
KS8000 cannot compete with Q8FN and Q9FN. Q8FN blows this TV out of the water. And I, and I mean it does. Okay. Picture perfect black deep dark levels on Q8FN. The highest possible peak brightness nits that it can, it can go up to 1800, 1900 nits. Okay, it's been measured, it can go up that high. Has 100% color accuracy, 98.7% of DCIP3 color accuracy. It has the uh, excellent motion flow and extensive game mode features with 120 hertz variable refresh rate. The list goes on and on and on. Okay, the only thing that's missing on KS, uh, not on KS, the only thing that's missing on Q8 and Q9, it's obviously lack of Dolby Vision. But other than that, uh, Q8 and Q9, they blow this TV out of the water. There is a huge difference, trust me. I know this because I have the TV. And other people who have purchased Q8 and Q9, and then they look at the KS8000, there's a big difference, guys. It's a huge difference. When it comes to deep dark levels, viewing angles, all these other features that I just mentioned. It's just, just better. This is why Samsung made Q8 and Q9. That's why they made it. Okay? And that's why it's more superior. Because it's a newer TV. Uh, they learned their mistakes from the previous TVs like this one to avoid the edge lit. Uh, even though they put edge lit on, on Q, Q7 and Q6, it's a bit more reduced edge lit, but it's still edge lit, you know what I mean? I think Samsung will get, get rid of edge lit totally. Uh, it, it was a mistake, honestly, for them to go with the edge lit to begin with. And I know why they went with the edge lit. They went with the edge lit because they wanted the, be the bezels to be thinner. Back in 2016, people want thin TVs. They want paper thin TVs so they can put it on a wall, you know. But this was the sacrifice you had to make. You had to deal with this uh, bottom light to, em to be emitting from the edge lid. All right, so let me give you my settings. I know you guys want the, my settings, so let me give you my settings uh, really quick. Let me show you my settings and what I'm using here right now. Uh, I'm using a standard mode. I'm just using a standard mode because that's where... My preset is so I can remember it. Backlit, I move it down to 13. Uh, this is something that I would recommend you move the backlit. If you are in a dimmed, dark room, uh, if you're in a very bright room, then you move this sucker all the way high. Remember, backlit, it's a personal preference depending on your environment, on where you are. Brightness, I felt moving brightness to uh, 48 because this is an edge lit TV and I'm trying to get those deep dark levels a little bit darker. So I moved the brightness to 48. Same thing with the contrast. I moved it to 90 because I'm trying again to avoid, uh, to have too much of that over brightness of my white bright digital levels. I'm trying to keep my uh, white digital levels more intact if you will to be more detailed sharpness 20 to to me for this tv for 65 inch it's a desirable uh level to be at and color leave it at 50 guys this tv already has an excellent color accuracy uh there's really no reason for you to mess around with the color leave the color at 50. now this is where it becomes interesting i turned off the motion plus uh, motion flow because I just I'm not a huge fan of the motion flow people. I don't know why people like that stuff. I don't I don't like that on the movies. I don't like that on the games. I just not a huge fan of that. I turn that off. Digital clean view I turn this off here because I'm not using any digital scrambled signals so therefore I don't need it. Uh, smart LEDs this is the trick. This will help. Uh, moving the smart LEDs to low is going to help with the uh, the edge lid a little bit. Not totally, but just a little bit, okay? It's going to tone down that brightness a little bit. So that way you don't have like ridiculous bleed of light coming from the bottom here. So you can avoid that bleed of light coming from the bottom. Um, black levels, I left them at low. 
so I can get even better deep dark levels here and also trying to avoid crushing them dynamic contrast this is something you really have to turn on high this is where this update 1231.1 has really helped uh, make this TV look a little bit better so smart LEDs at low and dynamic contrast at high color tone it's standard uh, but you can keep it at warm one uh, honestly I would suggest to keep it at warm one or standard but I think warm one would be desirable uh, honestly to me personally I would I would say warm one would be my desire to leave it there at the warm one and the gamma minus one this is another uh, trick right here that I would uh, suggest you guys do keep it at the minus one don't go below uh, minus one just keep it at minus one this will help uh, for you to get a little bit better deep dark levels without crushing them remember I'm trying to avoid to crush my black digital levels here so I'm keeping it minus one in color space uh, I say keep it on automatic but if you want to force it if you want to force it to native you can do that you know if you want to do that if you want to force it to native you have that option uh, now is it a good idea to force it to native uh, it depends if you're watching a movie I say keep it on automatic but if you're watching like a really good HDR content I say maybe keep it on native you know I keep it in native because because I really want to have the the, the best possible you know uh, I want to take advantage of the color accuracy here and that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to use a native I'm trying to force the native uh, white color gamut so I can get the best possible color accuracy and here you can see the the color accuracy here it just looks amazing I oh, look this is still a great TV listen uh, if you if you never owned a 4k TV let me, let me let me put it this way if you never owned a 4k TV and this is your first time you need to upgrade from your uh, 1080p TV to a 4k TV and you're stuck between TCL R617 or KS8000 if you can find KS8000 in a good condition for a really good price uh, I say go with it this is still a great TV but if you can find it for a really good deal if, it, if someone's gonna charge you like 1800 for it or 1500 don't do it uh, you got better deals out there like Q8FN or you know uh, believe me there's better deals out there but if you can find this TV like really cheap you know for like a really good price then I say go ahead go and pick it up you know it's still I mean I still watch it here it's in my office I still watch this TV it's still a great 4k HDR TV I think it was way ahead of its time back in 2016 uh, and I don't regret it I don't regret one bit of, of having this TV it's still a great 4k HDR TV if you want to experience HDR this TV will do that for you there's no question about that this is a full white color gamut quantum dot television uh, it's not like fully loaded quantum dot television as QLED uh, Q8F and Q9F but it's pretty damn near close to what it had back in 2016 it was way ahead of its time when this TV was released well there you have it guys hopefully this uh, Samsung KS8000 video helps you guys a little bit because I know I've been asked about this TV like constantly people ask me about the KS8000 KS8000 is a great TV if it wasn't a great TV I wouldn't be I wouldn't have it I mean I wouldn't keep it you know but I the reason it, it is still a great TV the only caviar the only problem it's that edge lid that's the only problem but overall, Samsung's are great TVs, man. Uh, they've been proven to be great TVs. You know, I mean, I know there's, there's a lot of people out there saying Sony this, Sony that. Trust me, uh, Samsung, it's more versatile. They give more option to people. You know, whether you want a game, enjoy 4K HDR movies, 4K HDR content, sports, they give more options. They're more flexible, you know. And that's the way I look at it from my point of perspective okay sorry about this video being 20 minutes but sometimes there's no way for me to do this video in five minutes and go really fast really quick uh, it has to be 20 minutes this is the only way I can tell you 
uh, what I need to tell you about this TV. Like I said, if you can't find this, if you can't find this TV really cheap, go for it. Get it. Okay. But only if you can get it really cheap in good condition. Okay. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. That's all I have to say about the uh, KSA thousand. This TV was way ahead of its time back in 2016. Take care.